Yeah, four runs uh, out of the shoot, you know, and Ryan Kirby's a guy, you know, that deserves a lot of credit because, uh, you know, he's been sitting on the bench, he's been platooning, you know, a little bit. Uh, he came through, I, you know, can't say enough about what we've been through in our non-conference uh, slate. We're ranked number one in the strength of schedule or two. Our RPI is eight and we have a 500 record, you know, so that's at Mississippi State, at Texas, at Cal State Fullerton, uh, Dallas Baptist at home and Moorhead State might be the best lineup that we've seen out of all those teams I mentioned so uh, I, it's uh, it's been a kind of a crazy start but we're in a good spot right now and you play some tough competition but mm -hmm. what the heck you guys start two and six and then you decide in ten days you just want to beat five ranked teams I mean yeah. well it's interesting because you know um, the media you know and the way our, our society is you know it's all geared towards the one loss record you know and uh, we just don't validate ourselves with a one loss record uh, and we never have you know I mean you look through the history of t the Torero Nation I mean it's last 17 years we just play anybody anywhere and uh, you know it just gets us ready for conference you know in the end when the smoke clears we think we're going to be really good um, the one loss record is uh, really doesn't mean anything you know to us it's all about improvement on a daily basis you know so um, we're not surprised you know we we don't get caught up in the craziness or this or that or what what other people are saying or blogging or tweeting. You know, we just come out and grind every day. What do you what do you point to for for the role that this team is on right now? You know, I think uh, the uh, the leadership. You know, with with some of the guys. Um, you know, I, I think that Colton Waltner. You know, is a guy that's been you know really hot. I think David Hill has given us two quality starts against Texas and Mississippi State. And I think our bullpen, I mean, that's three hits against the Fullerton team on the road. We held those other teams at bay. You know, it's Jacob Hill coming in, uh, doing real well. Uh, C.J. Burdick has kind of found his, his groove. And then, you know, it's the closer, Anthony McIver. You know, I mean, uh, to have a left-handed closer, you know, that comes at you from that kind of plane is, uh, you know, it's pretty special. So I, I think it basically pitching um, and defense. I know that was a long answer, but... Um, in the past, we finished last in in defense, you know, uh, and um, and the pitching was was a little bit suspect. So this year, we've really shored those those two areas up, and it's paid off. You, you mentioned Jacob Hill; he really seemed to neutralize things for you yeah. guys in the middle of that game. He looked great tonight. Yeah. Run record. What did you see? He's done that. You know, he's he's come right in. You know, after our uh, our righties, you know, Gary Cornish and his twin brother David. You know, I mean, it's just a it's a great story. You know, those guys. You know, turned down a lot of money. You know, from the pro people, they wanted uh, one year of Division One. Um, they are off the chart makeup kids, and um, you know, they just really held true, and their family held true to what they believed in. They want that education, and it'll really pay off for those guys in June. And you know, I think it'll pay. It's obviously paying off for our, our ball club now. You, you've kind of built this team a little bit differently than you've done in the past. You know, some JUCO pitchers bringing the Hill brothers in, yeah. and it's been the pitching and defense rather than you know the big offensive numbers that you guys are, have been known for. Yeah, well, it's it's not you know, hey, let's get Chris up there, you know, <laughs> get Connor up there, you know, Chris Bryant and Connor Joe leading off, you know, for the last two years and putting up uh, you know astronomical offensive numbers. You know, those guys are gone, and um, you know, I mean, we you know like to. You know, uh, view ourselves like the Patriots. You know, I mean, they can just win any way. If Tom Brady goes down, they do this. They just kind of mold to what they have and, and have had a very successful uh, organization. And, you know, this year it's pitching and defense, manufacturing runs. Um, whereas in the past, probably the past five years, it's just been, I mean, the sacrifice bunt wasn't even in our offense, you know, and now that's all changed. So you're right, Chuck. And that's kind of weird. Did you guys decide to go away from the sacrifice uh, or go to the sacrifice ball with a new ball right. versus, you know, during the dead ball era besides Chris Bryant? <laughs> Chris Bryant was here at the wrong time, man. Can you imagine if he was here you know, in the, with these balls or if he was here before with the nuclear bat? So he was here in that little window, and he still hit 31 bombs. So did Connor Joe. You know, those guys are just two of the best hitters around. And, you know, yeah, it is what it is, you know, and, you know, we've we've really been blown up in the draft over the years, so this JUCO guys uh, have really stepped in, uh, made a commitment to be here. They've all been drafted, you know, so um, that's really shortest up where we, you know, kind of took a hit in the draft the past couple of years. Heard some great things about Kyle Holder at yeah, short. Yeah, right. Boy, what have you seen out of him this year? Well, Kyle's the best. Uh, defensive shortstop I've ever had in 28 years, and, and you guys have followed college baseball 
for a while. You just you don't see a shortstop that looks like him. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's prototypical pro guy. The actions, the arm action. Um, yeah, he's he's special. You know, um, he's a basketball guy. We you know we, we felt very fortunate, very blessed to get him after one year, and he's just you know really blossomed. But uh, he'll go off the board pretty quick this June, and you know everybody. I've had scouts say he's the best amateur shortstop. You know, they've seen you know ever. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Um, yeah, and he's a great kid too, which makes it even better. Yeah. Does he add to that leadership and veteran presence that you guys have? Yeah, yeah. You know, he's got that kind of basketball swagger um, a little bit. You know, that point guard mentality where he's leading everybody out there. Um, you know, last year he was, he didn't have to. You know, with Louis Lekic and Connor Joe and Andrew Daniel and Josh Goose and Brown. You know, and this year it's kind of he just kind of stepped to the forefront and uh, really, you know, taking control. He's we've batted him third. You know, he's kind of fit in nicely to the two-hole there. And, you know, the defensive thing, you know, like I said, is pretty special.